Let's have a look at the fourth and final way to enter setup information into a new run file, importing text or .csv files. We've already seen in the third video how to set up the basic Excel template for this task. Remember that these are the column headings I used, and that their spellings need to be exactly as shown in order for the software to recognize them. This is a .xls file, which works great for simple copying and pasting as I showed you in the previous video. But for importing directly into the VS7 software, we actually need a different file format. So I'm going to do a quick file, save as, then change the extension, either to a .txt or a .csv, either one. I can save this to the same folder and without changing the file name. Now I go back to the VS7 software, click Experiment Setup. I'll choose 96 wells as my plate type and confirm that standard curve is selected. And click File, Import Plate Setup. I browse to the location where I save the file, and there it is. I highlight the file name and click Select. Finally, I start Import. And that's all there is to it. The information has now populated my new run template. I've already shown you the basic column headings for both a relative standard curve and delta delta CT run, but say I'm actually doing a SNP genotyping experiment. Clearly, some of the column headings will be different. So how does one figure out what these are? That's simple. Start by opening a completed SNP genotyping run in the VS7 software. Here's one, so I'll open it. I'll now go down to Export. In order to get the proper format, I want to export just the setup information. That means I need to deselect Amplification and Results. Now I click on the tab for Sample Setup. Notice how many column headings there are, a lot more than we had for a gene expression experiment. When you export the setup information using a completed run file, you get to see how many columns information can subsequently be imported using a template. And I, of course, have the option of deselecting any of these I don't want. And in fact, here's one very important piece of advice. Uncheck the box next to well position, as this will prevent a successful import. Also, just for convenience sake, go ahead and uncheck all four columns that contain the word color. It's a lot easier to select colors manually in the VS7 software later than it is to figure out which individual red, green, and blue values look good. With those five boxes deselected, I'm going to go up here and choose the appropriate file type. Remember, once I'm ready to do my import, I have to have either a .csv or a .txt file, but not yet. For now, I'm actually going to save this in Excel since I definitely want to do some editing of the document first, and that's something that's a lot easier to do in Excel than in, say, Notepad. I'll use the Browse button so I can export straight to my desktop. That'll make it easier for me to find the file later. And I start Export. Okay, I'll close this file and minimize the VS7 window for just a moment. Here's my exported Excel file on the desktop. I'll open it. The first job, I need to make a change to the format. You see all this information at the top? We can't actually import this data into a new experiment file since it's specific for the last run we did. So I'm going to select all rows above here by dragging my mouse across the row numbers, and then do an Edit Delete. Perfect. And one more thing. Before continuing, I'll save the file with this change made. At this point, I have all of my column headings in the correct place. I can now delete any information that I won't be using in future runs. In fact, what a lot of users do is clear out the columns for sample names, SNP assay names, and tasks such that they have a completely blank slate from which to work in the future. I'm not going to go that far in my demonstration, but instead just select each well under mm, the SNP assay column heading. And then, once I've got those selected, I do an Edit, Clear, 
all gone. And again, I can save this file if I want this information cleared from my template for good. In terms of populating with the new assay name, the great thing about Excel is this. Say I'm about to set up for a new run, and the assay I'm using this time is called TNF SNP. Well, I can enter that assay name into this first cell, and then I drag my crosshairs over to the bottom right until I see the plus sign, and I do a drag down in order to autofill. For time's sake, let's pretend I've entered all information for samples, tasks, assay names, etc. for my new run. I'm now ready to import this worksheet into a new VS7 run file. First, I do a file, save as. Try not to do a simple save, since your template will get written over with all this new information, probably not what you want to do. I need to change the file type to either .txt or .csv, since, again, these file formats are compatible with importing. OK, done. I now go back to the VS7 software, click on New Experiment, and choose the correct block size. We'll just say 96 well standard in this case. And the correct run type, genotyping. I go to Import, Import Plate Setup. I could also use the File menu to do this, of course. And I navigate to the file we just saved. Select it. And Start Import. And that's it! I can now go into the various Setup tabs over here to the left and change anything I need to. But if everything is good now, I'm ready to go to run. I'll just save the file as a .eds and start my run. Believe it or not, there are even more setup options that I didn't cover in these videos, including importing entire assay or sample name lists. To learn more about these techniques, just go to Help, VIA 7 Help, and do a search for the word Importing. Double click on any item that you want to learn more about. Well, I hope these last four videos gave you plenty of possibilities for entering your setup information into a VS7 experiment run. Thank you for your time, and be on the lookout for additional real time PCR help videos from Applied Biosystems, part of Life Technologies. So long.